Homestuck is a story, a story told online by an author, Andrew Hussey, who wrote Gamzee's life into existence as a silly parody of the insane clown posse, who created Gamzee's life to be a joke. But Homestuck is also the story of how Lord English murdered its author and took over the story for himself, ensuring that his dominance is forever absolute. L.E. cannot be defeated. L.E. cannot be stopped. And Gamzee cannot die because he has to become part of L.E. for the story of Homestuck to continue and so exist in the first place. Knowing this means Gamzee sees the story for what it is. A jokey webcomic structured like a theater play with himself as the comic relief. Where the rest of the characters see the world, Gamzee sees a stage. Perhaps Gamzee's biggest recurring symbols is the masks of comedy and tragedy, the archetypal symbol for theater and tragic comedy. The comedy and tragedy keys Gamzee vomits up for Caliborn serve to give Caliborn greater power over the very medium of Homestuck's narrative, the MSPA website itself. And Caliborn uses the same terminal to communicate directly with the ghost of Andrew Hussey himself which Caliborn uses to simultaneously berate Andrew for making story decisions he doesn't enjoy, and to demand special information on whatever subject Caliborn finds valuable. All of which is information any of Lord English's incarnations could have easily provided Gamzee with. We can learn more about theater through the troll called Purple Blood Shahut's last name, Maynad. In Greek myth, the Maenads were the female companions to Dionysus, the Greek god associated with wine, epiphanies, religious ecstasy, and ritual madness. Also associated with Dionysus are half-goat men called satyrs, who are described as archetypal musicians and dancers associated with the breaking down of traditional values. Like Gamzee, Dionysus is also intimately connected to his godly Allfather, the Demiurge. Zeus for Dionysus, Lord English for Gamzee. After his first death, Zeus saved his son by suing him up in his thigh and keeping him there until he reached maturity, so that he was twice born. Similarly, Gamzee is born again when he discovers his ultimate fate is to become part of Lord English. Worship of Dionysus is also credited with the eventual founding of Theater, particularly the tragedy genre. An early predecessor of theater is the satire play, a largely comedic and slapstick performance reminiscent of the trickster mode sequence. Early theater often employed the use of masks, allowing actors to easily switch between portraying different characters. This colors almost every action Gamzee takes as performative in nature. Recognizing Homestuck for the story it is, he plays whatever character is convenient to achieve his objectives. Gamzee also uses theater's history of audience participation to mess with the viewer directly, perhaps as punishment for our complicity in his existence as a joke. We can view pretty much every nonsensical impact on the plot he has this way, like how his immortality is literally derived from plot armor, practically begging the audience to call the story on its bull. But in particular, every sprite he creates in the alpha session seems deliberately designed to cause as much frustration and anger as possible, not just for the characters, but for us, the fans. Seriously, hear me out. Eridan and Solix's mutual hatred made them two of the most popular characters over the course of Act 5, with plenty of detractors and supporters on both sides passionately clashing to defend their favorite characters, and just as many shipping the two in hate-fueled kiss messitude relationships. Gamzee revives the character conflict between them, but without any of the fandom fuel romantic tension. Just misery and self-loathing with no catharsis, a disappointing outcome for any fan invested in seeing their conflict reach any kind of conclusion. Napeta and Feffery, two characters the fandom often criticizes the comic for abandoning, are brought back, but their union leaves them a running gag where the fandom gets to hear about all the cool and helpful stuff they're up to, but without ever actually seeing either girl talk again, feeling the fandom's bitterness over their relative irrelevance. And Tavra Sprite's creation eventually causes Riska and Tavros to get into a relationship together, extending the fandom's furious debate about their unhealthy, abusive dynamic long past the deaths of both characters when we thought we'd seen the end of both arcs. Arquia Sprite seems to be the exception, not really bothering anyone other than Jerk very much.
But of course, his creation is a necessary part of the script that eventually leads to Caliborn, Arqueus, and half of Gamzee's corpse being destroyed and merged inside the Lil Kaldol, bringing about the birth of Lord English. Don't believe me? Does this sound too thought out for Hussey? Just a bit too far-fetched? That's fine. I feel you. I understand. Just keep in mind that doubt itself is also linked to the rage aspect. Our skepticism is already written into the story itself. To me, it now seems that Gamzee's story is not that he was lying or pretending during his kind phase, or that he's a helpless victim of mind control, but rather that he's coerced, through his own intense convictions, into accepting a deep sense of tragicomic fatalism. This distances him from his friends as he can no longer see them as anything more than falsehoods to be obliterated and punished by the self-evident power of his one true god. We don't exactly know how Gamzee feels about this beyond the fact that he's accepted it and seems to revel in it to a degree. There are also some more ambiguous expressions of emotion that seem to suggest Gamzee might not be too happy with the status quo he's accepted as reality. Which brings up an interesting question for me, that I feel puts a new light on the half a Gamzee corpse that remains after the end of the masterpiece and the creation of Lord English. It's true that Lord English is the overbearing truth of Homestuck, the comic, but there are deeper truths than those that are immediately apparent from observing physical reality, such as the inevitability that all tyrants eventually fall, just as Lord English does at the end of Act 7 and the paradise planet that Gamzee so passionately believed in early in life, the one he wanted to share with his friends and at least one boy he had romantic feelings for, actually exists. Earthsea is that paradise planet. Only half of Gamzee went into Lord English, so he still technically has a corpse available. Jane could, hypothetically, use her life-restoring powers to bring Gamzee back from death's doorstep. Only he would now be in the custody of our heroes, with his god either dead or sealed in a black hole for eternity. If that were to happen, and if there's any truth to this reading of Gamzee, then what would the Bard of Rage make of this truth beyond truth, this promised land he would find himself in on the other side of an endlessly dark reality? Personally, it's enough to make me curious, although my personal suspicion is that if he gets the opportunity, whatever he does, it's going to manage to piss most of us off. Because seriously, f that guy. This video exists thanks to the support of my wise cohort of patrons. If you'd like to summon more videos like this onto your screen, then you can join them. Also make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you never miss another video. That's all for now. Until next time, keep rising.